and hidden where sometimes we cannot detect it are still a few myeloma cells, probably in most patients. Secondly, the stem cell product that we thought was a pure stem cell product, and lots of studies have been done to try and purify them even better. Even within those stem cell products that have, where there have been attempts to purify them, again, a few myeloma cells lurk there because the procedure of stem cell collection and separation is still not perfect. Will it ever become better? It might. We don't know yet. And one of the hopes with some of these new therapies is maybe if they are applied in the context of transplant, we may be able to get rid of some of these cells here or some of these cells here. And therefore, when we reinfuse this bag back into this patient, we might get a purer remission. That's one of the lines of research that is happening in transplant. Well, so let's talk a little bit more about specifics of the, of the side effects that we will see. I try to, um, to simplify it in my head because I can't remember much anymore. And when I'm talking to patients, I need to simplify things so that I can be sure I haven't missed something. So I talk specifically about three body systems where the side effects seem to be concentrated. The digestive system is one. So this is high dose chemotherapy. There is some nausea. Many patients will develop mouth sores and there is some diarrhea. Usually about three days or so of these types of side effects, but they can be quite severe. The bone marrow, remember, has three cell types and all of them are affected. So low platelets, transfusions are required in most patients, anemia, fatigue, blood transfusions, again, required in most patients, and a low white cell count, which increases the infection risk, but can be, the recovery can be sped up with certain medications. The third body system that is affected is the skin and integument. But again, the hair loss from this is temporary. It will grow back. It starts growing back probably within about three months. And I, I have some patients that tease me because I have lost my hair in a way that will never grow back again. <laughs> and I can't tease them about this. The hair will grow back. It's not a permanent side effect. All of these are side effects from which the patient will recover. Patients ask me how sick are they going to get? And I say they are about three days around when the high dose chemotherapy is given when someone might be very sick. Not everybody, but you need to prepare for that possibility that you could be so sick that we would ask you to stay in the hospital. Or you could be so sick that you would need to depend on a caregiver to drive you or to um, prepare your meals or to help you with things like that. So there are about that number of days of being extremely sick in most patients. In those patients who do get hospitalized, the duration of hospitalization is about three weeks. About one third of patients at, at the City of Hope, and we do it exactly the same way as you heard it's done at Rochester. We, in most patients where their insurance allows us to do it, we start the the procedure as an outpatient. They come in, they get their stem cell collection and all that. Even the days of the high dose chemotherapy can be tolerated as an outpatient. But about one third of patients end up staying in the hospital from then onwards for about three weeks. And another one third of patients start treatment at home, but then at some point get a little bit dehydrated or they spike a fever and you want to give them antibiotics or they are just very tired of driving back and forth and you end up hospitalizing them. In another third of patients, they are able to complete the entire transplant without staying in the hospital. Um, how long does it take to recover? We tell patients to take at least three months of work leave, at least, um, because it takes time to just recover, get a little bit stronger, feel better, and so on. And most patients tell me in the third month or getting in the fourth month is when their energy level and strength and abilities and so on begin to recover close to what they were before the transplant. 
Um, the mortality risk is now about 1%. But because many of the studies that were done in this disease, in, with this procedure were done a while ago, you might see the number 3%. So this is kind of the way I remember it. Three body systems affected, digestive bone marrow and skin. So digestive bone marrow and skin. Within the bone marrow, three cell types to remember. Three days very sick, three weeks hospitalization for one third of patients three months convalescence, and about 3% or less mortality risk if you combine both the clinical trials as well as the community hospital experience. Um, what are some of the limitations? Um, physiologic age, some patients are just too ill from comorbidities or, or deconditioning and so on, and they don't want to undergo the rigorous um, um, the rigorous demands of a transplant, or the transplant might not benefit them because they have other limitations from general health. Social, psychological, financial issues. I wish this were not an issue, but there are still a number of patients who do not have insurance that allows them to get a transplant, even though this is the recommended treatment for them by their physicians. Um, a transplant can generally be repeated once, and so when we go to collect the stem cells, we try to collect in one go enough stem cells to support two transplants. And then about three months after the first transplant, the patient gets evaluated again. If they've had a very good partial response or a complete response, we say, all right, we'll keep your stem cells in storage. They can be stored pretty much indefinitely. Um, if the disease starts coming back, which in most patients it will at some point in time, if a transplant is still the best thing to do at that time, a second transplant could be done then. In other patients who do not get either a very good partial response or a complete response, sometime within the period of three to six months after the first, we say to them, one good transplant deserves another. And those are patients that come back and they get a second transplant, but they do not have to go through the process of stem cell collection again because they've already done that. It's interesting that when you tally the side effects and expectations and responses and so on, it seems that as far as the side effects, a second transplant does not add much to the first. So patients typically get most of their side effects during the first transplant, and then I don't know whether it's just anticipation or preparation or selection, but for some reason, the second transplants tend to be a little bit better tolerated. Um, transplant.